Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Awesome God we serve. Yes, we yes. It is like the songs, uh, the worship songs that we have today. It is all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my word of encouragement, I was led to a song. And uh, before Jesus was Everything was already in order. Yes. And he came to accomplish everything. Yeah. I'd just like to say to Anders, not to worry because I've been here many times and I still get very nervous on that. Very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> <clears throat> I just offered to play guitar for him and stand beside him at the same time. That's good. <laughs> okay, so I have a, I have one verse from uh, Psalm 147, verse 11. It says, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him uh, and those who hope in his mercy. As we all know, the fear of the Lord is not to be scared of him. No. That's right. It's right. to respect and recognize who he is. He is. Yes. And we can't be scared of what he can do. Uh, uh, That's right. So, so I have here is uh, Psalm 103 I'd like to read. And once again, I wasn't sure until I was here and went through the beginning. We had the, the prayer and then we had the songs and then we had Pastor Dave speak to us. And everything is in this song. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Yes. And all that is within me, bless, bless his, holy his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Yes. Forget not all his benefits. His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Mm. And who heals your disease. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Mm. Yes. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your is renewed like the eagle. Yes. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all of us. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Will not always strive with us, or will he keep his, his anger forever? That's right. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, mm. or Thank you, Lord. Us according to our iniquities. For as, as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, yes. so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Oh, Lord. As the Father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Mm. For he knows our fame. Yes. He remembers that we are dust. Mm. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so yes. he flourishes. The wind passes over it, and it is gone. Mm. Yes. And its place remembers it no more. No more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Everlasting. Hallelujah. On those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. <clears throat> to, such as, to such as kept his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do that. Yes. So we all always have our part to do. Amen. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. And his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels. Yes. Fell in strength and who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts. Yes. Sisters of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Yes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord. I just thank the Lord that he knew, he knew what was going on from the beginning. 
Yes. And he knows what the end is. Yes. And he allows us to know part of it. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. With all the Holy Spirit just lines up that today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come in to share the scripture reading. Those in the house, if you have your Bibles, uh, come in to share the scripture reading for us, which will be the message. Uh, direction today is Minister Joanna out of Toledo, Ontario. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Amen. from the New Spirit Filled Life Bible, and the first section is Exodus 30. 34 to 38. <clears throat> and the Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, sacti and onica and galbidum, and pure frankincense with these sweet spices. There shall be equal amounts of each. You shall make of these an incense, a compound according to the art of the perfumer, mm -hmm. salted and pure and holy. And you shall beat some of it very fine and put some of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. Yes. But as for the incense which you shall make, you shall not make any for yourselves according to its composition. It shall be to you holy for the Lord. Yes. Whoever makes any of it to smell it, he shall be cut off from his people. Mm. And from John 4, 21 to 24, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Mm. You worship what you do not know. Yes. We know what we worship. The salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming when we now come. When the true worshippers for the worship of the Father are in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Yes. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Yes. Amen. Must Amen. Him in spirit and truth. Amen. Lord, and God has awesome a message upon my brother's heart. If he would open his camera and come on, we can see you in the house full on the television. So we praise God for that, and uh, we give God thanks and praise. And so we're going to close the house camera off, and we're going to see my brother. This is Pastor Alfred, Dr. Pastor Alfred of Mysticini. Um, he is the husband of Pastor Roslyn, and they're ministering in Mysticini. So may God bless him as he comes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I feel satisfied. And as a matter of fact, we have got it quite enough this morning. And I thought maybe we could just close by benediction. But, no. <laughs> but, the, but, the, but the Lord has something for us. And uh, he has his word that he wants us to listen to today. Amen. Uh, and we thank God because uh, uh, precepts upon precepts uh, makes the whole badge that we need for today. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the topic is true worship, true worship. Uh, and true worship, what is true worship to, according to God? True worship is that worship that reaches the heart of God. And, and, and a true worshiper has the expression of reverence and adoration of, the, of God himself. So I, 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 the reason why I'm coming up with this is that I had a conviction in my heart mm. that the, the, the position of the church today is, uh, is actually minimal in worship because we, we do everything good, but we don't break up, we don't get a breakthrough. We don't get a, a complete uh, attachment to our creator. And God is waiting for such kind of people. Yes. And, and, and the reason why the church is not growing 
both in, in, in number and in quality, and also I would emphasize in quality, is because we have left the way of our worship. Mm. Uh, and we have degraded ourselves to vain worshiping. Uh, and uh, and the God is not happy with that. So I, 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 I want to deal with the, uh, the two portion of the scriptures that has been written and, and bring it to the light of the worship of a true God. And that uh, the worship that makes God happy and be able to listen to us. Actually, out of the worship, we can get all our solutions that we are looking for. Even healing comes automatically. Everything mm -hmm. else falls in place when we are in tune with our God. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the reason why we need to go back to the drawing board and find out whether we have derailed from the true worship or not. Some of us have even gone to an extent of thinking that praise is, is enough. Yes, praise is good, but a sacrificial praise is what God look, is looking for. Yes, because, because a sacrificial praise is an attribute of a worship, and worshiping is a source from the regenerated person in you. If you worshiping God, you are actually in, invoking the Spirit in you to tune up with your Maker, and yes. that that is the reason why in uh, Exodus chapter thirty, verse thirty-four to thirty-eight, there was precision. God had prescribed how to make an incense, of, uh, an incense that would be would have good aroma before him. And there was specific instruction. And this instruction had to be done according to what God has laid down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, God has a way of instructing us in his own understanding, not our own understanding. Right. And when he instructs us, he knows that is the best for us. And he doesn't want us to add anything to his instructions or Amen. subtract anything to his instruction. And this is why he gave a specific uh, instruction by indicating how they should make the incense. Right. Take, taking up the portion of the uh, ingredients of those three uh perfumes that they were supposed to use, they were to take them in equal measure and, and, and make sure that it is all done well by an, a, a professional uh, a perfume uh, maker so, mm -hmm. that, so that when it is laid out, it is laid out to be satisfying in the eyes of God. Yes. And the instruction was, it has to be laced up with the salt, a salt of the covenant of God. Yes. This, this salt of the covenant of God was to be the topping, the lacing up of this incense. Yes. And after that, then that shows how sovereign God is, because this portion was to be poured in the tent of the meeting, that is the worshiping uh, uh, temple. Yes. The, the tent of the meeting that God can be present. It takes us way back even to the Genesis uh, uh, where God had to visit Adam in the Garden of Eden, a place where he had made himself God. And God cannot come just anyhow, anywhere. He comes to specific places that he wants you to be. He had set up the Garden of Eden for man. And, and for sure, Adam was to meet him at a specific time of the day. And mm -hmm. that was in the evening of, the, of each day to talk yes. to him, to communicate with him. Worship goes beyond just songs. It goes beyond just our imagination. It goes the way God wants it. Worship must contain uh, a complete reverence, a complete surrender to God. And that's why we say a true worship ascribes to the necessity in the worship of God. And a true worship is to be done in reverence to God. Yes. A true worship also arises from the heart overflowing with gratitude of what God has done in your life. Hallelujah. It is also a reinforcement. It reinforces the, your relationship with God. So a true worship must be a, to the living God. It has to be something flowing from you to God, honoring him 
seeing his greatness, looking at him as God, adoring him, something that you outpour to him so that yes. he can also come to give you the attention. It involves the entire person. It involves you as a whole. It, yes. does, not, it does not just uh, go before God, like he said that some of you uh, come to me and worship me with, with, with their lips and, uh, and, and they are far from me. Uh, mm -hmm. It is actually a deep concept, a deep concept that we should have God in us and reverend him and worship him. So I want to distinct between praise and worship. The praise, praise is simply uh, thanking God for who he is. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and, and moving before him and singing to him the songs that our hearts mix out of what we think God is. But when it comes to worship, it's completely different dynamics because mm. God wants us to worship him bowing. God wants us to worship him uh, kneeling down. God wants us to worship him, raising our hands to him because he wants a sign of surrender, not only from the outside, but from the yes. inside. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So true worship is deep and we have to go back to the worship because we have to look at ourselves and say that he created that. Our worship involved, uh, uh, worship actually help us uh, as believers. It helps us to quicken the conscience by our conscience by by being holy before God and by being people who God called to be. And it feeds our mind with the truth of God too. It feeds our mind with the truth of God as we continue meditating in us on how his greatness. And also it purges our imagination by the beauty of God. Because when you come before God and then you place yourself as a son of God or a daughter of God, you are actually tuning up with God, the one who created you. So yes. your imagination and your thinking is transformed in gradual steps. And by step by step, we are actually surrendering to him. So it also opens the heart to the love of God. Because when you worship God, like I had some of the songs, they are very soothing songs. It actually opens up your heart to the love of God. And also it devotes the will to the purpose of God. Your, yes. will, your will should now transform into the purpose of God. If you do that, you reach a level that God's will becomes a perfect will in your life. And yes. because God is looking for you to reach a level where now he can see his perfect will in you in yes. order to accomplish that which he had put in you. Jesus said in the New Testament that a time will come, and it is yes. now, that those who want to worship him will worship him in spirit and in spirit. And this is the time. Yes, don't, amen. Don't look at ways of worshiping God in your own way, but look at the scriptural laid down procedure for worshiping God. I also want to bring to our notice that uh, as much as we worship God, there is also an acceptable worship to our, our God. Yes. Because we, we sometimes think that we can worship God the way we think. Amen. But that is not what God is requiring of us. He has not asked us to devise a way of worshiping him. But he has asked us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And Amen. which means that the spirit must guide you from within to worship God. Amen. When men reject God, they will worship the false God. And it's true that when we turn our attention to everything that is around us, and we try to look at those things more than God, our attention is diverted from God. And therefore, the worship of God is lost. Mm. And, and if we don't follow the sacrifice and the instruction given by God, we will be no different from uh, Cain who killed his brother Abel. Wow. Because Cain brought in a sacrifice of the harvest that he had, mm -hmm. while Abel brought in a sacrifice 
of the harvest of, 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 the, of, the, of, the, of the sheep that he slaughtered. Now, the, the difference is that the other one had instruction that there must be a sacrifice of blood. Then the other one knew that the sacrifice is a sacrifice. This is mm -hmm. what I have. So when they brought, the, the two were brought to God, God as came after he had slaughtered his own brother. That if you did it right, couldn't I, couldn't I have accepted it? So there is an element of doing it right before God. Yes. And therefore, if we go to God, check, let us check ourselves. Check ourselves whether we are in the right setting of God's uh, desire for our worship. Amen. Yeah, the, the input to worship the importance of worship is that it strengthens us. It makes us become strong when we worship God. It makes us see God as God. Yes. God, God can never be reduced to image because we can we sometimes look at things around us and we adore them and, uh, and put them in place of God. Because if we put anything in between us and God, then we know that God will not listen to us. Nor, Amen. nor will he uh, accept our worship. Because he, him alone is to be worshipped and no any other God. That's right. Yes. And there is no wonder that there is a long line of idolatrous activities in, in the world today. Because we have put things in place of God. We have put our children in place of God. We have put our, our wives in place of God, our husbands in place of God, our possessions we have put in place of God. We have very little time even to go to church. You don't have to sing so that you may be seen to be worshiping God, but you, may, you must act worshiping. Worshiping is an act of reverence, an act of obedience, an act of uh, uh, stooping low and saying that, God, here I am, take me the way I am. Yes. You must surrender all to him. You must just surrender all to him for him to take part in your in you because he is there for you. Yes. But where are we? Where are we? Because we are lost in the things that we are following. The deep things of this world has taken us away from God, and our diversion is very far from God. The church is bleeding. The church is crying. There are no worshippers because the only church attendants and church attendants have nothing to do with the things of heaven. It's just an assembly, a gathering, but the church is crying out. The church of Jesus Christ today is me and you. And if we are the church, we are qualified to be worshippers. And therefore, I, my message today is centered on how much do we worship God? And do we know the true worship of God? Or we just come to church with praise and praise and then we go. We need to reach a level of worshiping our worship. God. Amen. And if we can't strike that level, it is better for us to seek God in privacy and also in open. That God may reach out for us because this is an, an individual matter and we have to sink deep and find out. The mixture that God had given out was for you and me. The mixture yes. was in equal proportion. And it was that you must follow the instruction as God has, has, has laid down. There was, in the, there was in the Bible a man by the name uh, Uza who was actually specialized in transporting the, 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 the tabernacle of the law. Yes. Then, then Uza uh, saw the tabernacle on a chariot stumbling, almost falling down. Then he ran to go and try and help support that, touch it. The and ark, he, yes. He knew very well that that uh, tabernacle, uh, tabernacle of God oh, the, 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 should not be touched by hand. No. But here is Uza who knew what to do, but he, he failed because he did a wrong thing. Yes. And, and that one actually he caused him his death. And and that is the same thing that is spoken of in the book of uh, Exodus. That when you when you even take a portion of it and start smelling, then you will be cut off from the people. You, 
you will be cut off from the people. There is that much serious because if you go out of the instruction or prescription of God, you can be cut off out of, uh, from the people. Yes. Because this is God's instruction and we don't have the mediator anywhere. The mediator now comes, Jesus, who is in us. Now it's even more sensitive because the master is staying in us and he wants us to follow what God wants. His instructions, amen. Yeah, because he said, when I was in this world, I actually followed everything. And I did, there's nothing that I did that my father did not tell me. I did amen. everything as he instructed me. So we should also do the same. Amen. Amen. There are people who exchange the truth for God for a lie and worship mm. and serve created things rather than creator. And this is a serious thing because we we bank on people, we bank on things that are living, we see them as the, our idols, and we love them more than we, what we should do to God. Romans Hello. Romans chapter one and verse twenty five speaks on that and say that. God does not like that because that is God, Godless, God, Godlessness. Because mm -hmm. if we do that, we are away from God. We mm -hmm. are, we are, it's true that we are mortal and, and, and live with limitation uh, physically, emotionally, uh, and relationally, and even intellectually. Yes, we are. But we have the grace of God. We yes. have the grace of God that has been poured out in abundance for us. That we can, we can still go back to God and cry out and say, God, cleanse us. Show us what you want us to do. Show yes. us how we should walk from here to there. Show us what you have for me next. I have this much I have reached and I do not have any other way to go. Show me because that is what God wants. Amen. He wants, wants you to entirely, that is 100% depending on him. He wants you to ask him each and everything like a child asks the parent. Yes. So that he can guide us, he can lead us where he wants us to be. And this is the, the, the reason for me bringing this uh, topic of true worship. True worship is centered on God. Amen. It starts with God and it finishes with God. Yes. It starts in your mind, you must know that you are worshiping God. Every region that does not properly acknowledge God is in true worship is, idol is idolatry. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do that does not acknowledge God is simply idolatry. The worship of a true God, uh, of a true God, must be signified. Must be signified with what God wants or God requires of us. And, and God, God cannot be cheated. Man can be cheated, but okay. God cannot be cheated because he has us, he's looking at us. His eyes are upon us day and night, and therefore we cannot hide away from him, and he has made us his own people, and he made us for one reason. He made us to glorify him. That is the whole reason why God created us. That the purpose for creating man is to glorify me, and if we cannot glorify God, then we have lost it. Because when we glorify him, we actually worship him. We adore him. We lift him up. We exalt yes. him in our hearts. We give him first preference in our heart. We walk with him knowing that this is the true God that saved us. And therefore, yes. we know that we can say, like, like this woman that said, surely we have found a prophet here. Because mm. he is God that has changed us. And the praises of his people is necessary. But the praises has to be with, praises has to be with a sacrifice. Praises is not just making words and singing them nicely from our head. Praises must be with a sacrifice. Have you sought God when composing even praises to him? Have you sought God when making song? Have you sought God when speaking? Have you sought God where you're working and when you are walking with God? Have you sought God in your life when you are doing whatever you are doing, preaching or doing everything? Have you sought God about it? Because that is when God is pleased with you as a yes. true worshiper. True worship may not be even singing. True worship may not even be uh, uh, yes, uh, 
I mean, joining up a good worship song. True worship is actual indulgence, actual surrendering, actual giving out. True worship yes. is giving out because the attribute of giving is what God is. He gave Amen. his son. He gave yes. his son. So we have to give ourselves to him in totality. We have to Amen. give ourselves in, to him in everything that we do. If we do that, our eyes will be open, And then the words will come true that says that I shall not put these diseases on you, which are put on the Egyptian. I mm. will be your God and you will be my children. And that he will look unto us at, as his people. And then when we pray, he will answer our prayers. And Amen. therefore, the scripture will be totally fulfilled in us, which says that if my people who are called by my name shall turn away from their wicked ways, humble mm -hmm. themselves, humility, yes. must humble yourself, turn away from your wicked ways, then uh, pray, uh, for, ask for forgiveness, and pray, God will listen to us. God uh, will answer us and heal our land. Because this, you, is, this is the problem we have. We have to get it from the root cause. The root cause is... There has been lack of worship in churches. Yeah. If Come you on. ask the people to raise even their hands towards God, uh, people have, have styles of raising their hand. Some of us even raise just some fingers, two fingers. Uh, some of them uh, uh, raise halfway as though you have some handicaps in your hand. We My should Lord. raise the whole hand to God yes. and praise him because he is God. He will yes. have to raise our hand. If he's made, let's bow down the person. Bow down the person. Yes. yes. We are not practicing worship. We are worshippers. We are worshippers. We are not people who are being taught how to worship. We were born to worship him. Amen. And we are his, so we have the privilege. We are the people he created. We are the people he's looking unto. We are the people God is banking on. God is not physical. God is spirit and is looking for your flesh, my flesh, to work with. He is demonstrating his ability, his power, his presence through you and me. He yes. is a God that is looking unto you, looking unto me for the perfection and performance of what he wanted. That's why he gave us this earth to live in. We are here. We are not of the earth, yet we are here. But Lord God wants us to dominate it with his presence. The Lord God wants us to be effective in the world he gave us. Here yes. we are practicing the world uh, in the world, and yet we slowly and surely de degrade ourselves from, uh, from the true worship into, into religion or tradition or or, or things that we see, we say this is the way it is supposed to done, so we do it like this. That's not what God said. God did not say just go and do it the way it should be done in the world. God created you and me that we may be worshippers and worship, worship him and him alone because it is him that created us. And all these things that are made that we are seeing and the things we are not seeing are all made by him. And he is great and superior, far and above what we are hearing, far and above the shakings of the earth, far and above the signs that we see, far and above your thinking, far and above everything that you would come across. He is God. He is superior. He is super. There is nothing to be compared with him. And therefore, when we come into his presence, we should know that we are worshiping a God that created heaven and earth. We are wow. worshiping a God that is able to change our lives. We are yeah. worshiping a God that can do anything. We are worshiping a God that is above the devil. We are worshiping a God that can break loose every Amen. chain. We are worshiping a God that can loosen you from the chains of the enemy. We are worshiping a God that is true the true and living God, the one that we only know, and the only God that cannot be compared with any other God. Hallelujah. This is the reason why we come. We are not going to going accept to the worship that is not for God. God. The worship, the worship of false God. We are not going to be coerced to worship gods of this world. We are a people that have been set aside by God himself. We are, uh, that's why 
uh, uh, in in First Peter uh, five seven says that we are a peculiar people, a unique people, a, gen a chosen generation. We are not for, of this world. Whether the devil likes it or not, we are not of this world. And for sure, for sure, he cannot get us because we are already hidden in Christ, and we have a seal in us, which is the Holy Spirit, and our seal bears us witness that we are of God. And yeah. therefore, he has no reason, uh, he has no foundation at all to shake us. And <clears throat> we will not be, we will not go before God and God sees us at what is written in Matthew 15, 8 to 9, that these people draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching us doctrines, the commandments of men. Because if we take the word of God and try to coin it in our own way as the commandments of men, then we, we are lost. We, we, we are lost and we cannot get closer to God. God wants us to go break loose, break loose from all that kind of doctrinal teachings, all kinds of, of setups that are, we have in churches and everywhere that go beyond that. We are unique. We can speak and things happen. Oh, last last uh, uh, preaching, we, we we went somewhere. We were invited to one of the community, and uh, a case was brought before us. And uh, we, I was asked to pray. I was asked to pray because uh, here is uh, the woman who was is nostal, and uh, the X-ray has re uh, revealed that there is a, a wound, a blister in in the futures. Uh, and the doctors don't know what to do because they do not know how to treat the futures inside the womb uh, whether, whether to operate the woman that the day is not come uh, and uh, they did not know what to do and the the, the, the grandfather of, of that of the, the lady who came to the church and uh, it was a crusade and he said look this is the position I come that I'm, <laughs> I need prayers and that was my day for preaching they said pastor can you pray for him for, yes I said yes then I said okay I want only to pray if all of us here believe that God can heal that fetus in the, in the womb right now. Amen. And, and we agreed. And I said, Amen. as you have agreed, this is the healing point. Ooh. I'm praying that the child be healed in that womb in the name of Jesus. Ooh. Simple prayer. And it was healed instantly because that same day in the afternoon, the report was the doctor cannot find uh, any wound anymore in the child. And this is because we have the power, we have the authority. So long as you plug yourself well to the source of power, and the source of power is the is the worship point. You get to God and con connect your cable well to the power source. Then you get the worship. You connect with God. You get the virtues of heaven. That's why you cannot stand and say that. I am. I know I am healed. If you are, you are caught by a disease that you don't know even how to come out of, you can rename that receipt, the disease, and give it a lighter name. If it is said it is cancer, said okay, there is some pain in my stomach, but it will go. Give that disease a name. Adam was given an opportunity to name everything that God brought to him, and he, that name he gave the things remained. And therefore, we have the privilege to name everything that uh, comes in our way, including our children, and that we can rename the disease. If it is a terminal disease, we said, I shall live to testify of the goodness of the, uh, of the Lord in the land of the living. This disease is not going to take me away. This disease is just by, will pass by. So it is Hallelujah. not a terminal disease. It is not a terminal disease. That's it right. Is, it is a disease to make me love my God even more, to Hallelujah. walk strong. And I know that if you stand by the word, and if you really are a worshiper, God is going to do great things in these last days because he's looking for a people who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. He said that, look, I am looking at a people who, who are dedicated, who are going to worship me. He told the woman in, in verse 21, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we are worshiping. 
what we worship. For salvation is of the Jew, but the, the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And for in the truth. Father is seeking such to worship him. That's God, right. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, Therefore, we are the people. This is the hour. It has come. And God has been looking for you and me that we may worship in spirit and in truth. Let's yes. not worship the speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is the fruit of the spirit. The All speaking right. in tongues is fruit of the spirit. It's good for us to speak in tongues. But the spirit is in us that has everything that we need, that has everything that any believer has. So everything. we have the spirit of God seated in us that has every solution to what we have so that we worship God from the source. We get it without any uh, any dilution. We just get the real cream. We yes. put our socket right in the plug and get the power from God. Where Hallelujah. is the power? We have been baptized by the fire, but where is the power? Where is the we power? Need the power. We need that power now yes. at any other time in our lives. We need to be identified with God, or by, uh, with God rather than being identified with the church the world. or Come what, on. whatever comes. We need to know it. We don't need to be so mimic that if, an, if a, a miracle happens there, then all troop up to miracles. We are not miracle workers. We are God's people. Miracles follows us. We That's look right. at God so that the miracle must follow us as a sign believer. We believe in God. We must worship him. We are the people God has put in this world to worship him. We don't regret when we worship God. We don't look back when we are worshiping God. We don't yes. care who, what people say. We will That's worship right. our creator. We will lift the same oh, hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't care where the world is going. We know that we worship because our God is the true God. And there is no any other God that we should worship except Him. Amen. Amen. This is the short message that I have for us today. And we should all worship God. By concluding, we say that God is looking for people who are going to worship Him. And they must be true worshipers. They must worship in spirit and in truth. Don't be, don't be clever enough. Do not try to be clever before God. Come on. Go in a way of worshiping Him. There is no, nothing like looking for a way of worshiping Him. We have to worship Him. Worship Him all the time. Worship Him in the church. Worship Him when you are working. Worship Him wh wherever you are. Worship Him. Wherever. God. Because we were given that privilege. We were given that privilege to uphold his name mm. and to glorify him all the time. Let yes. that go out of you. Let even if you're offended, the first word that should come out of you, I thank God for he has saved me. He Hallelujah. Is God. Let's so that you dilute whatever anger that is coming to you, you break it into pieces. Whatever yes. the dark the enemy f f uh, flies to you, let that, that be broken because you are completely soaked up in God, soaked Hallelujah. up in the spirit, worshiping yes. it. You are a victor from the start. You are a yes. victor from the start. And therefore, victory is assured of you. We yes. thank God and bless him because of his word and we want to uh, uh, Pray that God may sink this word deep into us. Amen. Amen. We just Amen. want to thank you and want to glorify your name because you are such a wonder working God. Yes. You know your people, Lord, and you know them when they rise up, when they, when they go back to bed. Many in our midst are weak and, and feeble, oh Lord, because we, we, we are not standing together as a body, neither are they uh, looking unto God, who is actually the source of our health. But we can also stand in the situation where in our pain and in everything that we are going through, knowing that God has the answer. And therefore, our answer comes through the Son, Jesus Christ, who dwells in us and who has promised that he will not leave us as orphans and has deposited the Holy Spirit in us as a sign that he is with us. And this is the sign of the seal of those who are in you, O oh Lord. And we have the privilege to have it. And their abundant grace, we thank you. We glorify you. We acknowledge you. We yes. lift you, Lord. 
And we adore you this morning, even as we come before you as our yes, God sir. and our Savior. May you, Lord, be lifted up. May you shine our midst. May you shine in our souls. May you yes. be our God, even as we continue going deeper and deeper in you. Till we lost in the spirit, we will go, O oh, Father. In Jesus' name in we pray. In the name of believe. Jesus. Amen. 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 Come and close us out today, please. You said Bishop? Bishop Bell. Okay. okay. I wasn't sure. I didn't hear you very well. I know. Apostle, Bishop, Pastor. No, no. It's not, it's not about, listen, God didn't give me. Um, Sister Mel. Listen, as long as you call me a child of God, I don't care what else you call me. Amen. Amen. Don't call, don't call me anything except what God has called me. And God says, God says I'm saved. So if you're going to call me anything, call me saved, call me forgiven. Amen. What a word on today. What a word. You know, the, the people received instruction on how to worship God. Yes. I want you all to understand that there's a specific way we're to come to worship God. In the days of Moses in the tabernacle, they were not allowed to, to be expressive verbally. They were not allowed to shout and sing and clap. It was that type of reverence that they brought to God where they were just quiet and humble before him. Yeah. But God changed that when King David came on the scene. Yes, and we, <laughs> we switched from the Mosaic worship to the Davidic worship. And we know that David danced his clothes off before the Lord with reckless abandon. When we come before the Lord, we should abandon everything. As the pastor just told us, it doesn't matter what it looks like to somebody else. It doesn't matter what it sounds like to somebody else because we're doing it as un to the Lord. And our flesh is not involved. It is our spirit that is worshiping God. God says he is the spirit and those, and those who worship, who worship him, him must, must worship, worship him in spirit. spirit. We got to be in the spirit when we come before the Lord. Yeah. You can't come before the Lord in your flesh. He says in spirit and in truth. And we know that Jesus is the truth. So we must come in the spirit of Christ when we come to worship God. That being said, we know that everything the Father says is right and good, that he would never give us anything that we don't deserve, amen? But the thing that we deserve the most, he kept from us, and that was utter destruction. We deserve to be destroyed. We deserved it. But instead of pouring his wrath out on us, he sent Jesus. And this is why we need to worship God the way he wants to be worshiped. It's not about you. God set the standard for our worship. And if you can't worship him the way that he can accept your worship, then you need not bother. Because the word is very clear. You need to make sure that you leave all your garbage at the altar and be reconciled. Amen. Amen. Then and only then can you worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't worship God in truth and in spirit if you're laden down with all kinds of burdens. Jesus said, take his yoke upon you. Because his burden is easy and his light, his his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so, Father, we just want to thank you for your word today. We want to thank you, Father, for instructing your man of God on how to instruct us. We thank you, Father God, that we know that there is a precise way that is acceptable to you when we worship. Father God, that we must come to you without all of the excess baggage. You said that we should cast our cares upon you because you careth for us. When we lose those cares, Father, we can truly come and pour out of our heart the things that you want from us. We can declare you to be the Lord of our lives. We can declare you to be the King of kings, oh God. We can declare you to have preeminence in our lives. And so, Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for your manservant. But most of all, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that allows us to come unto you, into your presence, and worship you in spirit and truth. Let us do that today with all humility and thanksgiving. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.